Okay. Howdy, folks. Uh, let's just give it a second here. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, can can you guys hear me? I think that's a maybe. Can I hear you? Yes. Okay. Uh, here we go. All right. Cool. All right. So I zoom. I got like different microphones, and Zoom doesn't doesn't understand that. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, thanks, Daniela. Um, okay, so let's get started. So I, I realized my iPad had like zero battery, and then I couldn't find the charger. Um, but we're going to need it today. So uh, I figured I should get that in order. Okay. Um, all right. So let's let's work through it here. All right. So we're in the midst of Malthus right now. We're, we're actually mired in Malth Malthusian stagnation. Okay. Uh, and the goal for today is to get out of that. All right. We're going to somehow engineer a solution to that. Okay. Um, I think we can do it. And also I think that it'll help you guys on the homeworks on the homework, because that's kind of, uh, related. Okay. So, um, yeah. So that's, that's sort of the plan. Okay. And then I guess, yeah, I'll go through that. And it's going to be stuff that's, it, it it's going to be kind of a similar flavor to the homework. Um, uh, but with some different details. Okay. Uh, and so, so hopefully that's helpful. Maybe at the end, I'll also jump back to the homework and just tell you exactly where, where you can use that. Okay. So, um, but if you have any questions about the homework right now, I'm happy to answer those or talk about that. Okay. Otherwise we can, uh, we can just move ahead. All right. Okay. So then, uh, but feel free to interrupt me at any time. All right. So, uh, and the homework is due on the 26th, which is Wednesday. Okay. Just keep that in mind. And since we're still remote, that's going to be on canvas. Okay. So you can just upload that on canvas. Um, and you can, with regards to how you do it, uh, you know, you can, um, you know, if you want to use, just write it out, uh, pencil and paper or pen and paper. Uh, that's cool. And then you can just, um, scan it with your phone or, or whatever. Uh, if you do scan it with your phone, I'm sure you've done this a hundred times, but you know, just in case, uh, if you do a scan with your phone, you know, just use a like scanning app rather than just a picture, taking a picture of it because the scanning apps will reorient the page and, and adjust the color balance so that it's more legible. Okay. Uh, you see some pretty funky stuff, uh, especially early in the pandemic of different angles and lighting situations. So, but, but the, the scanning apps do really help, uh, at least on my end. Okay. Um, and then if you want to use iPad or, or whatever pad, uh, to just write it out, you can, you know, that's obviously just a PDF. You can send that to me. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, so that's it for the sort of the logistics of the homework. Uh, so I guess we can, um, start on, on, uh, talking about Malthus again. All right. So, uh, let's see, just gotta get my iPad here. I'm in this situation where my cord is not long enough to actually reach to where I am, which is kind of an issue. So I guess I'm going to see how long 12% battery can last us. All right. Um, if I do run out of batteries, I have an absurdly long extension cord, which I'm going to have to use, uh, instead, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. All right. So let's see, connect this to my computer. Sorry. I'm all frazzled here. Uh, head on over to econ 1540. It's us. And it's just this. Okay. So, that should, in principle, be that's the website. That's always important, and this should be slides. Okay, yep, and there you go. We got the that old mouth of stuff from last time. Okay, so let's let's get started. All right, so we're gonna. I guess I'll um, uh, give you a quick overview, uh, uh, just a hyper fast overview of what we did last time. Okay. It's, this is like mouth mouth is two. All right. Okay. So, uh, so basically I'll give you just, you know, only the critical elements. Okay. 
So, and, and there's really, we can, we can accomplish that in basically two equations and then I'll sort of draw you a picture and, and go from there. Okay, so number one, sort of the most important thing and the thing that you're gonna be changing a bit in the homework is this, uh, this demographic rule, okay? That tells you, uh, you know, how your standard of living maps into uh, the population growth rate, okay? And we don't take a stand necessarily on whether that's through births or deaths or some combination. But at the end of the day, a higher standard of living is going to lead to a uh, higher population growth rate. Okay, that's number one. All right, and I'll put that in a second. And then number two is just that production function, which we're going to write like this. Okay, to the alpha, L to the one minus alpha. All right, so this says you combine uh, technology, Z, and uh, land, K. All right, it's capital-like, uh, except it's fixed in supply. And then L, labor, into output. Okay. And I like to think about it as sort of an agrarian situation, uh, because of the fixed quantity of land and the, the roughly static technology. Okay. And so from there, you can immediately just divide that whole thing by L. Okay. And get an idea of what is your, what exactly does that imply about your standard of living? Okay. And then, you know, you can simplify things. You're going to get Z times K over the alpha. Okay. And that's that, um, you know, so so that's that picture I drew of you know that that fixed world. I'll draw in a second again, uh, and you're just subdividing it, right? So you have this. Um, let's draw it now. Okay, so you have this this sort of fixed world, and you're just subdividing it into different plots of land. Okay, I'm gonna draw the whole thing. Um, and so the more people you have, the the smaller each individual plot is going to be, um, and hence the smaller the output per person is going to be. Okay, so that's reflected here because your standard of living y over L, okay, um, is a function basically of your technology and the amount of land per person K over L raised to some power, but it's, it's some function of that. Okay, so, and I guess <clears throat> I should say sometimes, you know, we'll call this a little y. So anytime I write like a lowercase letter just out of nowhere, it probably corresponds to an uppercase capital, if you will, letter uh, divided by uh, population per capita. Okay, so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's what's going on the production side. Okay. And then in terms of the demographic rule, okay. I remember we, we plotted that. Okay. I remember this can actually go negative. Okay. So we plotted that. We said, okay, you know, you're, 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 I'll call it, I'll, I'll call that little Y from now on. Okay. So this here, you can write this as theta little Y minus Y bar. Okay, so what is that? That means, so Y bar, remember, is just a number. That's like your minimum standard of living at which you your population stagnates. Y is the actual standard of living, okay? So Y is a thing that's like moving around over time, depending on what happens in the dynamics. Y bar is just a number. It says this is where you kind of hit rock bottom, okay? Uh, and then theta is just a, a scaling up and down constant. That's also just a number, okay? So, um... Yeah, and, and usually if, if a thing is a Greek letter like alpha or theta, it's it's like a param an exogenously fixed parameter or number. Um, just that's just kind of the convention. Things that are not Greek are are potentially moving around. Okay. Um, all right, so you got y there, and then we here we have uh, l that over l. Sometimes I might call this something like g sub l, so the growth rate of l. Okay, so that's what this thing relates. This relates. You know, you know, oh, you can write it here. This relates a little y and g sub l, which is l dot over l. Okay, so I just subbed in there. That's just notation basically there. Okay, uh, and it's increasing. Okay, we know it intersects the x axis at y bar. So when y is equal to y bar, it's going to be on the x axis. So it's going to start out somewhere and it's linear too. And that's useful. Oops. All right, and it's going to look roughly like that. And this intersection point here is y bar. All right, so that's what we can kind of say about this uh, function here. It's just an increasing linear function. Okay. Um, all right, and then and then from here, that's we can just sort of just turn through the logic and, and immediately. Uh, Jonathan, you got a question? I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, sorry. 
I guess, yeah, well, it's confusing because the, the X axis is we're, we're putting Y, but yeah. So this is the, the X axis is a little Y, Y over L. And then the Y axis is, is the growth rate of L. All right. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, it is. It is kind of, yeah, I, 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 doing it backwards is even more confusing, but it's kind of confusing to have Y on the X axis here. Okay. So then, um, Right. So, so this is, this is our sort of space. Okay. So things happen in Y space. That's kind of where we're moving around. Okay. So really we're, we're moving around in L the, the population is going up and down, but once you know the population, given that the amount of land is fixed and technology is fixed and this alpha is just a number that immediately gives you what Y is. Okay. So the, so if you know L, you know Y. Okay. So they're kind of the same in a sense. All right. So, um, all right, well, we worked through the last time is like, well, you know, your initial condition where you start, is just, it's, well, it's a, basically a population. It's a value like L at zero. Okay. And then once you know that L at zero, you can map that into your standard of living at zero. So but you know how many people there are. So you know how big these plots are. So you know how much they produce. And that's your standard of living at that time initially. Okay. And then when, once you're there, you can say, okay, well, I'm, I'm at, I'm at this value, you know, like this here value uh, for Y, Y zero. And I can see that that implies a certain value here for the growth rate of population. In this case, it's negative and population goes down, plot size goes up, uh, output per person goes up. Okay. And so then Y is going to go up. All right. So you're going to move along and that's, that's just basically going to be true anytime you're below that axis, the X axis, and you're eventually going to hit Y bar. And now at Y bar, if you plug that in here, to get the growth rate of L, you're going to get zero. And that means you don't move around. So you just stay there. Okay. And then you can do the same thing on the other side, just for an arbitrary high, high value for Y zero, let's say it's there. Okay. And then applies a certain positive growth rate of, of population. Population goes up, things are more crowded. Plot size goes down, output per person goes down. You're going to move down and the left. Okay. So I, I'm drawing it so that you're moving on this line and down and left and, and up and right. Really, you're just moving around in Y space in some sense, but I'm drawing you on the line. Okay. So, but either way, you're, you're eventually going to converge again to this Y bar point where you're just going to stay. Okay. So, uh, oh, sorry, Drew, you got a question? Yeah. So that's a good question. So, um, so I mean, little y is, is something that's moving around over time. Okay. We're like, we're told kind of what is the initial value for it. And then the, the dynamics of the population and of production implies a path for, for little y. Okay. So, so in some, you know, you could, you could think about it as like, Oh, sorry. Bumped you into grad, grad school there. Uh, you can think about it as like y of t it's moving around over time. Y bar is just a number. Okay. And so it's just a, it's just a point on the X axis here. And uh, that we know is sort of like a station, uh, going to be a stationary point for this process. Okay. So, um, so, so we literally Y bar is if, if you want to map it into like the a real, you know, kind of measurable stuff. I mean, it'd be like, you know, there's a certain income, like, you know, at this point it, it, in the Malthusian times, it would be like, you know, you know, a dollar a day or something. It's just a really low level of uh, income uh, that you sort of, even out in terms of uh, demographics, um, and then Y bar could be anything. It could be lower than that, it could be higher, but it's gonna it's gonna be some value that's moving around over time. Okay, does that does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's the variable. That the model is applying things about the the evolution of that variable. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Um, okay. So then, uh, right. So that's, that's baseline Malthus in a nutshell. Okay. So it, it's a relatively succinct model. Okay. And you can, you can work through and, and, and really the, you know, whatever we throw, I throw at you in terms of changes to this model. Okay. So this, this is the core, this is like the baseline, what we'll call it. Okay. Uh, that gives you regular stagnation is sort of the simplest variant. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is, is change that. Okay. So when I say mouth, when I say a Malthusian model, I, I might mean this, but I, what I really mean is this class of models. Okay. Uh, but this is like the default. Okay. 
Um, and so what you're doing in the homework is a, is a variation on this. Okay. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the best way to solve any of this class of models is really to just plot this demographic rule and just sort of think through logically, okay, I'm here. That's what does that imply about GL? What does that imply about production as it evolves and so on? Okay. Um, all right. So, so now what we want to do is, is, is throw some additional stuff in here. Okay. Um, and the, sort of the, the two candidates, uh, well, the, the, there's there's a couple different candidates that I've alluded to uh, over the the days, I guess, or week weeks here. Um, uh, so one is technology. Okay, so if tech, it makes sense that if technology gets better, that it's going to improve the standard of living, and perhaps that can help. Okay, and so right now Z, that technology parameter that controls how much you produce for a certain set of inputs, uh, land and labor, uh, that's that's not moving. But we can say, well, what if it moves? Okay. And so on, um, and uh, and I think we did that. I, I believe I, I can't remember one hundred percent that we did that last time. Okay, and we found that basically it doesn't change much, right? Because if you if you change z, let's say you're 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 Malthusianly stagnating here at y bar, you've converged basically, and then there's a change in z. Someone invents something new. What well, all that's going to do is bump you up in y space, say up to here. But after that the same logic pulls you back down. All right. Um, it feels like there's like an Al Pacino movie where he's like pulled back down. All right. So it's the same thing. Um, you, you have a temporary increase in output, but then that in induces a population growth. Basically things get more crowded alpha per person per person goes down and eventually you end up back here. So in the short run, it is good, you know, uh, but in the long run, you eventually converge back to the same standard of living. Okay. You also have more people. Okay. So that's, that's probably good. I think people I mean, like for an individual person, it's not clear what the effect of that is, but uh, societally you may, you may value just a larger population. Okay. Um, and so that's another thing that would result. Okay. So, so at that point, it's kind of a, a subjective question of, of, of how you value that. Okay. But, but that's the effect. Okay. So that, that's a, a one-time increase in technology. Okay. Now in the homework, what I've got you looking at is, is a continual increase in technology. Okay. So that's where it, it's, you know, the, the hits just keep coming, right? So you, you just continually have these improvements and it's an exponential process, like that exponential growth that we, we talked about mathematically last time. Um, maybe that, you know, can can do the, the trick, okay? Um, yeah, so that's one option. The other option is change this demographic rule, the assumption number one here, which essentially is changing the shape of this line here, okay? And the, that's another thing that we're throwing in the homework. Um, and then the third option I would say is change the assumption that K, the amount of land is fixed. Okay. And that's what solo does. So what, ne what the next model we do is solo, and that's just going to directly change that assumption about K. K is going to be generalized to a broader notion of capital that includes machines and structures and stuff like that. Uh, and that's going to also, well, that's going to work. It turns out and also resemble what we see in, in the modern era. Okay. So the solo thing we're going to do, but before we do that, we're going to try this other stuff and see if, we can either say, okay, that works too, or say, well, that's not that reasonable. Let's try something else. Okay. All right. All right. So then um, let's do that. Uh, so I guess, okay. So uh, all right, we're down to 10% battery. Let's see how far, let's see how far we can take this. All right. So then um, let's see how should we, we, sh we should proceed here. Okay. So I guess uh, what I'm going to do is say, I'm going to say, okay, well, I know a few things about the world. I've been around a few years. Uh, maybe I can, I can spruce up that demographic rule. Okay. And see if I can't um, generate something better. Okay. Uh, so what, but my spruce up, I mean, I'm actually going to make it more realistic, at least according to what I sort of understand about the world um, and see what the effects of that are. Okay. And then see, is, is that sort of better or worse in some sense? Okay, so so first we're going to try and change that demographic rule. Okay, so this is like, it's not like a rule as in like you have to do this. It's not like the one child policy or anything like that. Um, it's it's uh, all, it, so sometimes people just call them rules or laws, which is confusing, but uh, it's an equation. Okay, it, it, it governs how it um, 
it evolves. It's weird though that all this stuff about like defining how something does something, you like rule, law, govern, it's all stuff that's actually related to like um, imposition of, of of rules. Okay, so uh, but anyway, that's an aside. So what we're gonna do is say l dot equal l equals something else. Okay, so it's gonna be some function of y over l. Okay. All right, just like before. So the, the thing up there is is some function of y over l. And in particular, it's theta times y over l minus y bar. Here we're going to say, well, what if it's just some other function that, that, that's different? OK. Um, and so what I'm going to propose is sort of a synthesis of the of sort of a more historical, historically, I guess, accurate uh, uh, Malthusian style regime, and then sort of a, a more uh, uh, accurate from a modern perspective, uh, uh, sort of modern regime. Okay, so um, so we're going to start out in Malthusian regime down here. Okay, so that looks pretty much like what we have above. Okay, and then eventually we're going to sort of peak. All right, so this is what's called like the demographic transition. We're going to peak, and then we're going to actually start decreasing. And then maybe we equilibrate somewhere. Okay, so what's I'm gonna rotate this because I can't draw a straight line. Uh, and this is just gonna keep on going forever. Okay, so uh, all right, so that that terminal value on the right here, you know, it's maybe that's like one or two percent what you see in the modern time. So like USA today or many modern countries today are kind of up here. Okay, where you have you see that you've seen this reduction, and but but maybe there's just some natural whatever you want to call it. Uh, rate of population growth after a certain point. Okay, so you know, so like in here, oops, uh, this area, this is like Malthusian historical times, right? And then this area is sort of like modern times, modern times. Okay, and then the middle, I guess, is just the transition between those two. Okay, so in here you have that that dynamic where uh, and let me label my axes here. So this is this is y over l. I'm gonna I'm gonna I've been trying to just write y. Okay, this is gl. Okay, so this is your standard of living. This is the growth rate of population. Okay, so in, in terms of those, we can write it. This is the you know these two are equivalent things, right? So I'm just subbing in notation. Okay, so this is gl. This is your standard of living y. Okay, now, um, uh, okay, so on the, and I guess this, well, this is zero, okay, so uh, on the left here, okay, we're in that Malthusian regime where um, increases in the standard of living lead to increases uh, in um, the population growth rate, and uh, yeah, same, same sort of idea, and there's some point here, we're still, we can still call this y-bar, okay, it's just some point where that crosses zero. Okay, I'll just call it library. It has a it has a different like um, interpretation, but it's still the point where this cross this function crosses is zero. Okay, so I don't know what I could probably give you an equation that describes something that looks like this, like x times either the minus x or something like that. But um, yeah, but I won't do that because at this it's it's pointless. I'm just going to give you a sort of a qualitative description, and that's good enough. Okay, we don't need to go through every single little detail mathematically. Okay. Uh, all right. So, okay. So that's, that's pretty much it. And you can, you can, we can define, you know, say this, this 1% is defined as like N. So it's, cause you know, I could define this as like N and say, you know, it's about equal to 1%. Okay. Right? That's similar to like the N that we have in the homework. Okay. That's sort of a long run notion. Okay. So, um, so yeah. All right. And then, uh, yeah, so, so from this, though, we can actually pretty much work everything out, okay? And actually, it's not going to change that much, right? Uh, it, it's not going to change that much uh, with just this alone, right? So sometimes you, like, throw in one thing, it doesn't work. You throw in another thing, it doesn't work. When we throw them together, it's magic, it magically works, okay? And that's that's going to kind of be what happens here, all right? So the demographic stuff isn't going to quite work. The technological change alone stuff isn't going to quite work, but actually the combination of those two We'll get you out of the Malthusian hole, all right. So that's that's where we're going, okay. Um, right, but what's the problem here? Well, uh, essentially, you know, you, you do the same thing. You say, okay, throw down a random point. Just think through what would happen, 
Okay, and so so this this remember this is like the assumption type number one where we have we specify the uh, demographic function. We're going to maintain the assumption number two, okay, which was our production function, which was basically well the important statement of it is this, which is that you know basically the more population you have, uh, the lower your land per person, and that's the lower your output per person. Okay, so that's still true. Okay, uh, we're not going to break that probably at all today. All right, so now with these two, then we just do the same thing. We, we throw down a point, work through the logic, see what happens. Okay, so throw down a point here. And usually usually it's it's easiest to just put into like zones or regions. It's like, so it's like the left of Y bar zone, the right of Y bar zone. Maybe it matters whether you're on the left side or the right side of this peak. Maybe it matters whether you're over here or over here, right? So I'll just go through different options. Okay, but on the, the left side, it's going to be the same thing. On the left side, you have a pretty low standard of living, um, such that you have negative population growth. That drives this L down, which drives land per person up, which drives output per person up. Okay, so that's... Um, hold on. Okay, so I've been like... I've been I've been like pointing at the wrong thing. So uh, that drives L down, okay, uh, which drives output per person up. All right. So I have like um, <clears throat> I have windows mirrored in various places, and I have to be sure that I'm pointing at the right thing. Okay. So um, and what does that mean in here? So your your population is going to go down, hence Y is going to go up, little Y, and that's going to be true up all, all the way until you hit Y bar. So that's the same as before. Okay. Then we can think about, okay, well, what if we start here? All right, still in the Malthusian region, but on the other side, well, it, it's going to be the same. Uh, your, your population's growth, growth rate is going to be positive, pushes population up, pushes up per person down. Okay, and that's going to be true until you basically converge to Y bar. Okay, so we've sort of established that in that, that Malthusian zone, basically nothing's changed. We've, we've added sort of stuff that's just kind of extraneous to this zone. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's let's jump into the modern era. Okay, so if you jump over here, okay, so well we went over that demographic transition. We're in the we're in the the region where, you know, uh, if you if you look at the relationship just in the modern regime, where between standard of living and population growth rate, it's negative, which is exactly what we see in the data today. Okay, so if if you look at one country over time as it uh, its income goes up, its population growth rate goes down. Um, you know, you see that really pretty starkly uh, in the U.S. Um, in China, uh, a bunch of the country, the East Asian countries that grew really rapidly. You saw that, okay? So, um, and you see it all over the place, okay? So, and then also, if you look even within the U.S. across uh, people by income, you see kind of the same thing. It's pretty noisy, but you, you see roughly the same thing, okay? So this this is a pretty solid fact here, all right? That this demographic rule is, is negatively sloped in that region okay and in your homework it's going to be like that it's going to be negatively sloped okay which is the opposite of not this okay so what happens here all right so but but nonetheless but the, regardless of the fact that this turns over and has the opposite slope the only thing that's important is that you're above this axis this the x-axis here because that's where it says the gl the population growth rate is positive okay so you're you're all the way over here you're, you're doing well in terms of standard of living population growth rate is positive hence it's actually going to push the standard of living down. Okay, so uh, my arrows are not super great here, but it's just going to keep being true. Okay, it's not going to stop being true regardless of the fact that you're going over this hill. So in fact, you're just going to go all the way back down. All right. And you're going to kind of accelerate even in here and then eventually hit the Malthus, the Malthusian stagnation again. Okay, uh, and that's just going to be true just everywhere. There's no place that it's not true because the only thing that really matters is that you're above the x-axis, okay? And so you're just going to go all the way down. So the it, it continues to be true in this world, even though I added in a more realistic demographic function, uh, that you will have this Malthusian stagnation, okay? And so you could have a huge technology shock that, you know, say you were at y bar, it could bump you all the way up here, but eventually you're going to converge back down, okay? Um, you know, maybe that takes a really long time, right? Um and and so so that's that's one option okay uh if you, if you think about the earth today we have a ton of land okay um even the ton of habitable land even in the us right so um 
maybe it just takes a really long time. Okay, so, uh, but that's going to be the implication of this particular model. Okay, so, um, so that didn't quite do it. All right, so I guess I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to even use a color here. X that that didn't work. Okay, um, for for just just the demographic rule change alone. Okay, um, okay, and so demographic rule change doesn't work. You can combine demographic rule change with a one-time increase in technology Z. Like I just said, you're eventually going to come back down to earth. All right, so that doesn't work. A one-time technology change in demographic rule doesn't work. Okay, um, but maybe this demographic rule with uh, continual uh, technological improvements might work. Okay, and this is where we're getting more into the something that's going to look like uh, what's on your homework. All right, so so let's do that. Okay. Um, and and uh, I, I probably, yeah, I'm, I mentioned this, but, you know, I'm, I'm putting this all up on YouTube, the links on... Uh, on the external course website, I could put it on Canvas too, but this is this is all up on YouTube, okay? Um, it, actually, not because I, I looked at it today and I saw that you guys, someone is watching it. I assume it's you guys. I don't think other people are going to be watching it, so I'm honored that you you at least watched some of the some of the YouTube videos, okay? And you know, if you want to go back, reference this could be helpful. All right, so um, I encourage you to. So uh, okay, so let's let's do the technology thing. All right, so this is going to be uh, technology. I'm not going to write out the whole word. Technological, that's even longer. Growth, and then and I'm going to say continual. Continual technological growth, all right? So that, that's another option here, OK? Um, <clears throat> all right, uh, so, so what's that going to look like? All right, so, so this is uh, growth in Z, OK? And remember, you know, so we're going to say that like G, well, okay. So, you know, let's first, let's say the statement is that Z dot over Z, that's the growth rate of Z. Okay. Just by GZ definition. Okay. Um, that's going to be positive. All right. And, and in particular, it's going to be some number GZ. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, I might just I might accidentally call it G sometimes, but G or G Z or whatever. Okay, so so the growth rate of Z is some positive constant. Okay, and and remember what we showed last time, just mathematically, you know that means that Z is going to look like you know Z T times <clears throat> exponential G Z T, right? So this being a co po positive constant growth rate means that Z T uh, Z over time is growing like an exponential function. Okay, um, and it also means the log of z is linear in time and all that stuff. Okay, uh, all right. So, so what, what is that going to do for us? All right. Well, um, you know, it, it's going to be useful. Okay, uh, but we need to think. We need to be careful, and 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 I want to show you kind of the best way to to approach these types of problems. Okay, so, but the the general dynamic though is going to be there's going to be continual inc improvements in technology. That's going to be pushing output up, okay? And it's going to be pushing output per person up too, all right? Because, uh, you know, y equals y over l is equal to z. Okay, over that. This is still true, okay? So continual improvements in z is going right, to, that's going to be a push a little y up continually, all right? But, um, as little y goes up, all right, that's also going to push population up, right? Uh, potentially, you know, at least in the Malthusian world, it will push population up in in the this new, more nuanced, you know, modern uh, medieval fusion world. It's going to do something, all right, depending on what that function looks like, all right. But but let's say it's going to be pushing l up. So there, there's a there's a tension there, okay? You know, z is going to go up which is going to have the direct effect of pushing Y up, but it's also going to increase L, which is going to have sort of this indirect effect of pushing Y down. Okay. All right. So I don't know. Can I draw a picture? You, know, you got like Z. All right. That's going to have a direct positive effect. I could draw that in green, but I'm too lazy. Um, and 
it's also going to have a direct effect on L sort of over time. Okay. Uh, but then L is going to have a negative effect on Y uh, over time or in the immediate sense too. Um, okay. B through this equation. So then you have a positive direct effect and, you know, plus times minus is minus. So a negative indirect effect, the net of those is, is not clear X and T. Okay. So it's you know, ambiguous effect, right? Um, Okay, but we have um, we, we we don't have to stop there. Okay, sometimes it's like, well, it's ambiguous, and we're done, right? But you know, we have we we've, we've specified a lot of this stuff mathematically and and precisely, and so we may be able to disambiguate that, right? So uh, yeah, so how can we do that? So this is where we're going to use these growth rate tricks and rules that I alluded to last time, okay? And we're going to apply them to this function here, and see what we can get out of that. All right. So, uh, yeah, I guess I need to do a little mathematical aside here. Okay. Math. All right. Uh, you, you know, I, I alluded to these that uh, root the, those those logarithm rules that you have uh, about the log of, of a times b or whatever, or the log of a divided by b or whatever, uh, are also true about growth rates. Okay. So let's let's think about the the product rule. Uh, so this is product rule, product rule. Uh, but okay, so there's product rule for derivatives. That's a thing, but that's not the same thing here. It's related. Um, there's also the product rule for logarithms, which is that the log of a times b is equal to the log of a plus the log of b. All right, that's a true fact there. All right. Um, Okay, and I'm gonna. That's also gonna be true for like the growth of a times b is the growth rate of a times growth rate of b. Okay, and uh, I mean ba basically, um, why is that? Okay, okay. So now is this true for growth rates? The answer can be yes. I'll show you. Uh, think about the um, growth rate of a times b. Okay, so when I write like g as sort of like a function of a times b, it's saying the growth rate of a times b. Okay. Um, all right. So then, uh, so, so what is that? Okay. So there's the, um, yeah. So, so you remember last time we decided that the growth rate, right, is, uh, well, it, you know, the, that's just by the definition, it's the time derivative of A times B divided by a times b, okay, in this case. So it's just the derivative with respect to time divided by the thing itself. So that's what I have here, okay? Um, and actually, we, so we are gonna use the product rule for derivatives, because now we're gonna apply d dt of a times b, all right? That's gonna be, was it first times the derivative of the second? So a times b dot plus the derivative of the first, a dot times b, and then on the bottom, we still have a times b. Okay, so it's the, that's the product rule there. Okay, and then the cool thing is that things cancel. So on the that first plus term, they're distributing this, this divisor here. On that first plus term, the a's cancel. So you get b dot over b. The second term, the b's cancel. So you get a dot over a. All right, which is just g of b. Okay, so I reversed it, but that's also, yeah, g of b plus g of a, which is the same as g of a plus g of b. Uh, and that was what we wanted to show. So G of A times B is G of A plus G of B. Okay. So that's, um, that's your, your product rule for growth rates. Okay. Um, now why did I mention logarithms? So the, the other, the other way you can prove it is with logarithms. Okay. So you can say, well, G of A times B, you remember we showed last time is equal to the derivative with respect to time of log of a times b. So the, the growth rate is the derivative of the logarithm. That's just always true. Okay. So here we have the growth rate of a times b is the derivative of the log of a times b. Okay. And you just got to be a little careful. Okay. So that's d dt of log of a plus log of b. Okay. And like the derivative is, is like a linear thing. So this is, you can distribute that basically. So this is d dt log a plus d dt 
we'll have a B. Okay, and that's just because the growth rate is the derivative of the log, that's the growth rate of A, and this is the growth rate of B. So this is G of A plus G of B. So you can you can prove that um, with logarithms too. Okay. All right. So so those are, that, that's the at least the product rule. Okay, and then the the nice thing about I guess I'll just keep going in this like weird tangent column here. The nice thing about um, <clears throat> The logarithm one is that you could just kind of directly map stuff. Okay, so let's let's think about another puzzler here. Let's say we do uh, the growth rate of x to the alpha. Okay, so I'm I'm not going to do a to the alpha because that's confusing. X to the alpha. Okay, um, this is where the 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 growth rate formulation is just much easier because you, you can say, well, this is d dt of the log of x to the alpha, right? By definition of growth rate. Um, and that is, well, what it's a ddt of, well, the log of x to the alpha. The thing about growth rates is you can pull exponents down. So that's equal to alpha times the log of x. Right, that's just a that's a fact about growth rates. You got an exponent up there, you, you just pull it down, no problem. All right, um, that alpha is just a constant. That so the alpha doesn't depend on time, only x does. I guess I should have mentioned that. X is the thing that's moving around over time. Alpha is just some constant, and it's just like we have alpha up there. And so you can pull it. It doesn't depend on time. You pull it out of that derivative. Okay, so you get alpha d dt of the log of x. And finally, that ddt log of x is just the growth rate of x. So this is alpha g of x. Okay, so g of x to the alpha is alpha g of x, just like a log. You just pull the you pull the alpha down. Okay, so you want to be careful. Like sometimes people get a little confused about when you can do that and where you can pull stuff down from. Okay, so in this simple case, you can just directly do it. Um, because if a depended on alpha, then it's a different story. But generally, the exponents are going to be constants. Okay, um, and then the same thing up here. Sometimes people get confused, like the law, like you know, the growth rate of a plus b. That's not the growth rate of a plus the growth rate of b. The growth rate of a times b is the growth rate of a plus the growth rate of b. Okay, so there, the, the, there's no sum rule. Okay, there's a product rule. Okay, um, and the, the reason is that. Uh, Growth rates are proportional notions, um, and so you kind of multiply. It's more often and more like sensible to multiply things together than add them together when you're dealing with growth rates. Okay, so I mean, sometimes you can't avoid it. Sometimes just things are multiplied or are added together, and that's just the way the world is. I need to, to work, work with that, but I'll try and make the assumptions such that we don't have to deal with that. Okay, all right. So that was our little aside there. We we covered the product rule, and we covered. Uh, the power rule, I guess. Um, and then the other one, which which I think is sort of, maybe you can predict at this point would be the quotient rule, which would be like A divided by B. Well, that's just the growth rate of A minus the growth rate of B. Okay. You can actually derive that from the power and the product rule because you can use, you can apply this with alpha equals minus one to get one over X and then multiply them together. So you can do that, but it kind of makes sense that because of the product rule that the quotient is just GA minus GB. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need. Everything everything we do is gonna be combinations of those things. Okay, and, and that's what we're gonna see right now in right here. All right, so let's apply that to our standard living function. Okay, um, so we're gonna get G of Y. All right, I'm just gonna deal with a little Y from now on. G, this is a G, that's a Y, uh, is gonna be what? Well, it's gonna be, you know, I'll just, I'm going to take this one step at a time. It's just going to be G of whatever it is, which is in this case, Z, K over L, the alpha. So it's G of that whole thing. Okay. Um, and then we're just going to apply these rules step by step. Okay. So first thing, the, the outside is it's, it's a product of two things. It's a product of Z and K over L, the alpha. Okay. So first we apply the product rule. So we get G, Z, and then G of K over L the alpha. Okay. Then we apply the power rule to that second one. So that's K over L the alpha, which means that it's alpha 
G K over L. Okay. And then we apply the quotient rule. Okay, so we actually just, just one time applied each of our rules. And so we're going to get G of K over L is G of K minus G of L. Okay. And, and when I write G, like the, these two things are equivalent. G of L and G sub L, it's just different notation. The, the, that means the same exact thing. Okay. All right. So then, um, and this is G of Y. Okay. So that is interesting. Okay. Um, okay. And, and so what that tells us is how exactly, because remember we had a direct effect of Z on Y. Can we fit that? This is the direct effect of Z on Y. Just barely. Okay. Uh, here, this is the direct effect, right? The indirect effect uh, is here. Okay, so uh, Z will affect L, and then L is going to go in and, and eventually affect Y as well. Okay, so those are the two effects. But now we have an equation that actually kind of quantifies them. So we can we can disambiguate. We can say, okay, well, this is the force that wins out in the end. Okay. Um, all right, and so, so I think because we have sort of like simplified things, you know, I'm going to write this with just these subscripts now because I don't feel like writing parentheses all over the place. GK minus GL. Okay, so that, that's just turning parentheses into subscripts. It's the same saving uh, virtual ink. Um, and now there's one more thing we know, which is our assumption that the, the amount of land is fixed. Okay, K is fixed. And anything that fixed is fixed has a zero growth rate. It's not moving because its derivative is zero. Its derivative divided by itself is also zero, as long as it's not zero itself. Uh, and so its growth rate is zero. Okay, so... That means that this term, oh no, I mean, I am going to erase it, but I wanted to do it in a different way, like this. Okay, so that term is going to be zero. So we get GY is GZ minus alpha GL. Okay, so, so at the end of the day, really, it's just like, it's GZ, the, the effect, direct effect of technology minus the indirect effect that's coming through that demographic rule through GL. And alpha kind of is the determines the weight of that demographic stuff. Okay. Um, all right. So now in the original solo model, we had an equation that said GL equals, you know, theta times Y minus Y bar. Okay. So we could plug in the original solo model, we could just plug that directly in and we actually have a differential equation just describing exactly what happens to, to Y. And it would be that it just sort of converges to Y bar. Okay. Uh, but now we have this updated demographic rule. Remember we have, we had like GL was equal to some F of Y. Okay, so, so I mean, we could, I could write that. Uh, Malthusian. So, um, who was that? Was that Joshua? Was that his, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so, oh, I said so, I'll say, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay, so also I'm, yeah, in my grad class, I'm teaching solo, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting my wires crossed. But yeah, so the original... Yeah, and we, we haven't done the solely yet. We'll do it probably next week. So, but yeah, it's the original Malthusian model. Yep. So, so that original Malthusian model, we could, we could plug that in, you know, directly. Um, in this case, we just have some uh, alpha f of y. Okay, so now this is still a differential equation in y, right? Because this gy is y dot over y. Okay, so... Uh, it, it is an equation that says y dot equals some fairly complex function of y. It's not super friendly. Okay. Um, you might be able to solve it. I, I, you can probably solve it if you're fancy, but, but I, it's not really that useful. You know, cause we, we already know basically qualitatively what's going to happen. Okay. And then once we have a general f of y, then it's just, we don't, we don't know. Okay. But we can, uh, kind of work through it, uh, intuitively and graphically. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. And uh, yeah, so let's, let's do that. I think I have enough room here. I'm going to like, I'll do this. All right. I, I'll just draw this right here. Okay. So let's draw that graph again. Okay. So we have the Malthusian zone. Okay. I don't want to, all right. They have the Malthusian zone here. And then we kind of 
of the demographic transition and then we converge off to wherever flat uh, constant uh, population growth. 5% better. I think we're actually going to make it. All right. So, um, okay. So now there's one difference. Okay. Uh, which is the following. Um, before when, my, when I was doing, let me just go back here, uh, doing this, you know, there was no technological growth. It was all just, uh, F, um, G, you know, GL was FY and basically GY was minus alpha FY. Okay. We worked there. It's minus alpha FY. So there was no countervailing force, you know, it was all demographic stuff. Okay. And that's why we got this. Okay. What we're going to have here is we are going to have a countervailing force. And so we're not going to necessarily going to converge all the way back down here. Okay. And, and I guess the way to see it is that this, this, remember, this is Y that's our X variable. That's where that's, Primarily Y is what's moving around. And that's what we have. We have an equation describing exactly how it moves around, which is cool. Um, so then the question is, where is Y moving? Is it going up or down? Okay. And really what it's going to come down to is, is this thing positive, right? Is this term here positive or negative? Okay. And what that comes down to is basically, you know, is GZ, uh, you know, is it greater than or less than uh, alpha f of y or, or really um i guess we don't even have to invoke f is it greater or less than alpha times gl okay because you know think think about this equation is gy positive well it is if gz is greater than alpha gl okay so um this so this is you know gy is positive when gz is greater than alpha gl okay um Another way to think about it is, is that GY is positive if you divide through when, um, I guess, when uh, GL is less than GZ over alpha. So I just, well, I, I, I divided alpha over here and then flipped the equation. So this is, you know, as long as GL is less than GZ over alpha, then Y is going to go up. Okay. So, so, cause, cause technology is the, the direct has the direct effect of increasing output, but then it induces a change in GL, which, you know, more population in this Malthusian world pushes down output per person. Okay. So, uh, those are the two countervailing forces. And so, um, that's what's, that's just what's being balanced here. Okay. So the, which, whichever one wins comes down to exactly this question. If this is true, then the standard of living will go up because technology is enough to overcome the, uh, the effects of like, or of crowding of density. Okay. So now we can do it. All right. And I think we have enough time. All right. We got 15 minutes. Uh, it's plenty of time to, to walk through the logic here. Okay. So, so what does that mean in this space? Okay. What that means is, um, uh, you know, that, uh, th this is just some, this thing here is just some point in GL space. It's 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 a threshold in GL. So you can draw it like you could draw it like right here as a point on the y-axis because it's we're thinking about it relative to GL. So draw GZ over alpha. Okay, so that's just a number, right? GZ is that growth rate of technology. Let's say it's two percent. Alpha, let's say it's a half. I don't know. Um, that's just a number. So maybe it's four percent. Okay, and, and it's how we're judging things in a, in a relative sense, uh, with regards to this population growth. Okay. And I'm even going to draw a dotted line here. Okay. Uh, all right. So then, so now this makes things more interesting. Okay. Because before the only thing that mattered was whether you were above or below the X axis right here. Okay. Now what matters is whether you're below or below this line. Okay. If you're above this line, if GL is greater than GZ over alpha, then you're going to move right because GY is going to go up and you'll move left otherwise. Okay. So what's the implication? Well, n now that the, the, this is going to divide the Y values into different re regions. Okay. So, and it's going to depend on this intersection here. Okay. So you're going to have different behavior in each of these regions. Okay. Um, so, 
Uh, yeah. So, so what are you going to have? So let's just work. I'll work through it. Now we got a couple different, you know, we're going to look here. We're going to look here. Sorry. Am I? Yeah. We're going to look here, we're gonna look here, 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 any of, any of those breakpoints in between them, we're going to, we're going to look at those individually. Okay. So let's start here below the, below even that threshold. And, and this is, by the way, still called Y bar. If we, if we want to refer to it, we can call it Y bar, the intersection point. And we could call these like Y1 and Y2 or something. These are also points that we could demarcate and give assigned names to. Okay, so let's say that this is still Y bar because it's the intersection point. This is Y1 where it inter where this value GZ over alpha intersects this line here. And this line, remember, is F of Y, which, which is the population growth rate. Okay, so, all right, so now we can do this. So let's say we're, um, down here. So down here, we're below that GZ over alpha line. Okay. So uh, that means that population growth rate is going to, or sorry, that uh, that means that uh, someone, maybe that's just, I'm hearing some noise here. Um, but anyway, that, that means, okay, that means that population growth rate is negative. Okay. Um, and in y, GY is negative. Okay. So Population growth in it is negative below this line and positive above this line. That's still true. GY is negative below this line and positive above this line. Okay, so in this zone here, um, population growth is, uh, is uh, let's see, relatively low compared to technology. And so it goes up. Oh, you know, okay. No, sorry. I'm, I'm pointing at the wrong thing on my screen. So, okay. This, this looks better, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Sorry. I, was, I, I have this OBS window open. I'm pointing at the wrong thing. Okay. So then, um, all right. Sorry, over again. Uh, so, so basically this line still demarcates whether GL is positive or negative, And this line demarcates whether GY, which is a combination of different forces is positive or negative. So, down here, okay, uh, the population growth rate is negative, and you know, uh, G GY is going up uh, and all of that. Okay, in here, okay, the the population growth rate is positive, but it's not so large as to totally swamp the effects uh, of technology. Technology, okay, up here in this zone where you're above the dashed line, population growth is really high, and it actually is. Um, such that it, it is overcoming the effects of technology. Okay, so that's good. Sorry, and then over here, you're back in the, the good zone. All right, so so down here, <clears throat> uh, uh, GY is positive. Okay, GL is negative, G, GY is positive. All right, so you're going to move up. You keep moving up. Okay, so now we get the Y bar. Okay, and, and actually, we're still good. Okay, because... Um, GL is zero in the old world, we would have just stayed there, but we have technology is still growing. Okay. So that's going to push us past Y bar in fact, but Y bar is not going to be a point where we get stuck. Okay. So we're going to keep going. All right. We're going to keep going. And basically the new point where we kind of get stuck is potentially is, is that Y bar. Okay. All right. And then, and we're sorry, Y1. Okay. And when we're at Y1, okay. That is in fact that threshold point, right? That's where G, Z over alpha and GL are equal. And that's where y, G, Y is gonna be zero, which means technology and population growth are perfectly counteracting one another. And so the standard value is gonna say the same, okay? All right, now let's let's think about if we're up on the high side here, somewhere uh, in the, near this peak. All right, now here, GL is really large. The effects of, of, of crowding are, are such that they actually overcome the effects of technology. And that's going to mean that GY is negative. Okay, so it's a little confusing because when you're in this high above the dashed line, GY is negative. And when you're low below the dashed line, GY is positive. So it's, it's kind of the opposite of what you might think initially. But so you're going to move negative in Y space, which means left, and you're going to converge here to Y1. So Y1 is sort of a basin of attraction. You're going to end up there. And that's going to be true anywhere in this zone here, at least left of Y2, anywhere you could, if you, you think about it, you're going to end up at Y1. Okay. So, and, and, and basically that means 
any if you start anywhere left of y2 you're going to end up at y1 okay so um in a sense this is still kind of malthusian the left of y2 it's fairly malthusian right cuz you have some fixed uh level of income that you converge to it's a little better okay cuz it's not y bar it's y1 but you can see these aren't that different it's like a dollar a day versus a buck 50 a day you know it's not that much better okay um so it's still a kind of a not great and and if you're demo, if, if that's all you had if you just had the the standard malthusian function that just kind of looked like this and continual technology growth that's what you get you get a little bit of a bump but it's not continual or anything like that uh joshua Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, basically most countries in the world up until 1800 didn't see that much improvement in, in the standard of living. So I guess the quest, yeah. And, and I guess, yeah, yeah, this is that period. And, and uh, once we talk about the other side, then maybe we can think about how the transition occurred, but, but you can think about it like that. So, so the one thing is that, um, and, and and it could be that I'll say the one thing is that what we have here is continual technological growth, um, and population growth, but like the the combination of forces forces results in stagnation. Okay, so there's the question of historically, was it just that technology wasn't growing, or was it that the technology was being counteracted by density, or something like it? Okay, uh, and maybe density can work through like disease and things like that. So so um, that's uh, not, I, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily true. This is, this is like, a you could maybe tell a story that there were some improvements in technology, but, but nothing like I, I would say, like you see in the industrial revolution. Right. So, yeah. So I, I wouldn't say this is a full account. This isn't like a, a grand historical uh, narrative right here. Okay. But it's one theory that you might have. Cool. Um, okay, so let's. But I think I think it'll be, uh, it's also good to, to then tie this in within with it, with the modern side. Okay, so so now the modern side. Okay, if you think about um, what happens if you start say somewhere over here. Okay, um, somewhere over here. Okay, so uh, you're below the dashed line. Okay, so that means the population growth rate is it's kind of high, but it's not so big that you're uh, counteracting fully the improvements in technology. Okay. So you're going to have positive uh, growth in the standard of living. Okay. And you're actually going to head off this way. And that's going to be true anywhere below this dashed line. Okay. So you're just anything to the right of Y2, you're just going to go off to the right. And actually, if this FY just stays here below the dashed line forever, you're going to have continual um, growth uh, at, at, um, the rate GZ minus alpha times whatever FY converges to, right? So you know, we, if we call that N, then the growth rate would GZ minus alpha N, which is positive. Okay, so so in this in this case, you actually just keep going off to infinity. Okay, um, <clears throat> all right. So then that's kind of interesting. Okay, and it kind of relates to some of the stuff that I think you by chapter four you will have touched upon in why nations fail, uh, which is that we're seeing a bifurcation. Okay, we're seeing a bifurcation uh, as a function of initial conditions. So think about that critical, I think chapter four introduces this, the critical juncture notion. Think about that critical juncture. If you're to the left of Y2, uh, you know, you're um, in, in this model, you're gonna converge down to Y1, right? A fixed kind of not great point, all right? If you're above Y2, you're gonna go off and have continual growth, okay? And if, if there was some small thing that determined, uh, that affected Y2, like you, you got some technology you didn't, or your population density was sufficiently high or low, you could have, you can imagine small changes here determining whether you're above or below Y2, and then having massive implications for the, the, the future direction of a, a region or a country, right? Because if you end up on the left side, you end up at Y1, which is stagnation. If you end up on the right side, you have, a large amount of growth. Okay, so that that's an example of 
bifurcation inducing a potential critical juncture um, type of situation uh, with, with this kind of model. Okay. Um, yeah. And then the other thing is that if you were at Y1 and you had some large one-time improvement in technology or transfer of technology from somewhere, you could make the jump, right? You could, you could get out of that stagnation and, and get on this conveyor belt to continual growth. Okay. So, um, yeah, so it, you, you do have the possibility of stagnation. You do have this sort of trap. Okay, I don't, it's, it's different a little bit from the, the types of things that people talk about when they talk about poverty traps in the modern development literature. Uh, but it's got a similar notion of you're, you're kind of stuck there based on your initial conditions and you could potentially break out somehow. Um, so it's I think it's kind of interesting in that way. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, and then I guess... Um, what is this? The other thing is like, what does this look like exactly? So, uh, what, what this, you know, the two outcomes, so these either converging to Y1 or going off with continual growth in Y, uh, with continual growth in Y, you, you do still have a fixed amount of land. So what you have is a situation where technology is improving pretty rapidly. Population is growing at a constant clip. All right. But you're, you're, you're still good in terms of standard of living. Um, so, but if you think about it, literally, I mean, it's like you're at a fixed amount of land. It's like you're like Singapore or Hong Kong and you just have continual increases in population too. Also, so population density is literally going to infinity, at least in the limit. Okay. Uh, but technology allows you to sustain that. Okay. So it's not implausible. I mean, you think about a place like uh, Singapore and Hong, especially Hong Kong, you have, you know, very high population density, skyscrapers and everything like that. Technology is critical to sort of maintaining all that, you know, New York to Manhattan. Um, and so, so it's kind of like that. Okay. If you take it, if you run the model forever, it gets pretty goofy, but you could imagine, you know, that we're, we're somewhere along that stage. If you think about it's very dense city cores. Okay. So, um, yeah, but you might also think at a certain density, you start saying, uh, I should probably go around and look more for some more land. Okay. So that's the other thing, kind of what I'm, what I'm alluding to in uh, the last part of the homework. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of, that's, that's one way out of Malthus. Okay. Right here. All right. That's one way out of Malthus. Uh, change, have a demographic transition and have continual technological growth. Okay. Um, yeah. And I mean, if you have a fixed factor, then such as in this case, it's land, but you could think about other fixed factors, uh, fossil fuels, environmental, uh, resources and things like that. Um, kind of this logic can creep in. It's not always the dominant logic, but it, it can uh, scarcity basically can, can, can be a factor. Um, and so we'll think about that, um, more, I think continually as we go through the course of just sort of that notion and, and, you know, is how does scarcity sort of interact with technology and stuff like that. Okay. So, um, yeah, but then in terms of the homework, so the homework, you, what you're plotting in the homework is sort of a simpler, simplified version of this modern arm of the demographic rule. You start high, you go down, and you you ba you bottom out at some baseline level, which I think is called N1. Okay, so like N1 is like over here. All right, so and then you have continual growth. So it's, it's similar. You're kind of more explicitly solving something that looks like this modern regime here. Okay, so so that's what we're looking at for the homework, and then that last part is just thinking. And what are the incentives to find new land and, and stuff like that? Okay. Um, all right. So I, I think that's it. Uh, pretty much out of time. Um, if you got questions, I'll, I'll stick around for a few minutes here. If you have any questions. Uh, and also my office hours are tomorrow at 1 p.m. Okay. I teach at 2.30. So I can do them at 2 when I normally would. But they're at tomorrow on Tuesday at 1 p.m. So if you got questions, definitely come by there as well. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you on Wednesday. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it would. Um, because yeah, so so uh, and a lot of times 
you know, when people talk about that Z, they'll call it total factor productivity, TFP. Um, and, and kind of the reason they do that is they, they don't want to pin everything on technology because they, it, all that's saying is how, how much output do you get per like combination of inputs, right? And so, yeah, it could be changes in allocative efficiency in, induced by market structure or political structure incentives and, and things like that. Yeah, so it's really just kind of everything else that we kind of don't observe or, or is, is not just the uh, material inputs and how does that map into to output? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep.